a couple of questions that came in saying, how do I know how much fat is the right amount of fat? Uh, and of course, you cannot answer that without knowing where are they on their keto continuum. Because if in the, they're in the first phase of their keto continuum, I need that fat going in. I'm depending on their hormones to go up. This keto continuum is showing you the three sections uh, where I've divided them up. And I kind of gave you a little hint there showing here's the beginner section. That's where, where one, two, three, and four are. Um, ignore the six, seven, and <laughs> the six, seven, and six that's on the numbers besides the baseline metabolism. Uh, that uh, continuum are, those are the ones where they get to a baseline metabolism. It is from a baseline metabolism that I encourage people to use intermittent fasting. I do not recommend that you get to a baseline, uh, that you reach to a fast if you are in one of the beginner stages. And that process of becoming, going from beginner to going to baseline, it can happen in as little as two weeks for somebody whose metabolic health is strong. But if you've got insulin resistance, if you've been on a low fat diet for a long time, the hormones that I need to rise are going to be wimpy. And if you reach for a fasting cycle uh, before you hit that keto adaption, and keto adaption means, doc, I accidentally missed a meal. It's a beautiful moment. It happens. And when it does, I get really excited because it is the best way for me to measure your endocrine hormone process. Again, I have said this a few times, we can measure that time and time again uh, in, the, in the spot of a moment. We have the labs that will do it, but endocrine matters where it's been, where it's going. I need a collection of data to truly understand that. A better way to assess somebody's uh, endocrine system, especially in the settings of the ketogenic world, is ask them, I actually, I just wait for them to tell me, I accidentally missed a meal. And don't force it, but it happens, and it's amazing. Some of the other things I like to point out, the difference uh, of the first, second, and third of these sections, in the beginner section, as long as you get through that third day, you're peeing ketones. You have ketones that are turning your little strict pink or purple. Um, you have this chemistry that's working on your side. You cannot graduate to a baseline metabolism. You cannot go on to 16.8 until that chemistry is predictable. It's solid. It has a foundation. And where does that chemistry come from? It comes from fat. We get into fasting, which is a little more psychology, and we get into some of those baseline metabolisms, which require the patient to make some choices. But what I like to answer when I'm looking at is fat, uh, are you taking in too much fat for your uh, ketogenic diet, how much fat is the right amount of fat? And I will tell you, number one, it begins with, uh, do you ever miss a meal? Did you, do you accidentally miss a meal? And uh, patients don't like to uh, admit that at first because it's, it's kind of weird and kind of like sucking on salt like we did last week. Um, but really, the uh, improvements that come with the, that hormone setting, this, the first symptom that I like um, patients to, to keep track of is, do you feel full? Do you feel full? Uh, and without, um, without that first step, uh, you're not having enough fat. When you get to looking at some of the other later steps of that keto continuum, that's where we start to say, all right. So I'll tell you a little story about my mom and I. When we were on the ketogenic diet, I was just beginning. I had read lots of papers about how quickly you can heal a brain injury. That's really what got me interested in the ketogenic diet. Whether that's concussions or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, uh, I was so impressed by how quickly those neurons re-insulated those wires, those, those nerves in the brain on a ketogenic diet, uh, in part because the inflammation was so low, but also because they have these hormones present. <laughs> They're fat-based hormones, which are in charge of repairing, could have access to those, those repair processes. Uh, but when I've, I've studied a lot of things in my life as a physician, but I don't need to do them. So I was I, I had tried to pee a ketone a couple times, but I didn't really need that. Uh, and then I, then I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go keto for at least a month. And that was, I don't know, I think it was God because that next month was when my mom said, I don't want any chemotherapy. I want to die. I, this is ridiculous. I'm not taking chemo again. My brain has never worked so poorly in my whole life. 
Uh, and so we said, all right, well, let's do, I said, all right, let me show you what I would do if it was me. If I had cancer and I, my white blood cells weren't doing well, how would I do it? Uh, so we started on the ketogenic diet and we had all the fat we could have. I mean, it was awesome. Everything had cream in it. Everything had sour cream on it. Cream cheese was used in every recipe that I could think of. Um, we were awesome at eating high fat. It was great. And I knew that the key to her success was she couldn't get hungry uh, because she would, she's a hundred miles away from anybody. And as much as I could be supportive over the phone, if she transitioned onto this new goofy way of eating and she got hungry, mm -mm, that was going to be the death of our experiment. And number two, um, if, uh, if I was going to ask her to do this long term, uh, we had to keep practicing how do those uh, how do those fat molecules fit into her life and how do they fit into her schedule? So we went all out. We had lots of fat. And for six months, we did not lose a pound. <laughs> we were awesome at making ketones, but this was not about weight loss. Now, I'll be honest, my mom went from needing antibiotics 52, 50 out of 52 weeks the previous year. She went on the ketogenic diet and in the first 12 weeks, she needed it once, which I cannot tell you what a signal that was to me saying, this is what health looks like. Her body couldn't defend off a strange, you know, fungus in the wind, you know, that you're, that's normal. You, you should be able to defend that. But hers was broken. She had cancer of the white blood cells. She had a whole bunch of white blood cells that didn't belong there. And on top of that, her immune system was built from a fat from a, a, a standard American diet, no fat available. She'd been low fat for 30 years because her daughter told her that's what she should do. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the, the next season of our fat-based journey, it was uh, filled with uh, no weight loss. So one of the keys though is we got stuck. We got, st I and mean, I didn't even know there was something more. I was just so happy she was doing well. I was happy she was, uh, her cancer was decreasing. I was happy she was full. And she was no longer depressed. She was, her eyes were alive. All those fat-based hormones that I wanted, that I'm talking about for you, they were being supplied in this 71-year-old woman who it could have been close to zero for her. Uh, I'm going to show you one more little thing on that. So looking at this keto continuum, I'm just going to drag it up here and show you that um, as you look at some of the uh, more advanced levels here, um, and I won't go through all this tonight, but I do want to give you a, a hint that 16.8 becomes a place where we, we start r decreasing the options for hours. And I like to show you what happens in 16.8, which is clean up your morning drink. Remove all the calories and sweeteners uh, from the morning drink. No fat, no MCT, only salt, water, black coffee. And I tell people, do not remove the fat from your morning coffee before this phase. You need it to get here. It is the time once they've got um, that ketogenic uh, fat hormones back in action, but please do not um, mis, uh, misinterpret that you need high fat in your coffee forever. Uh, some other things that I like folks to see is that you should never reach for one of these, in my, in my recommendations, I would tell you never to reach for a fast of a 36 hour fast until you are stable at a 16-8, that you've done 16-8 for at least a couple of weeks. And again, what I'm doing is practicing the surge and decline of the hormones needed for you to get the benefit out of a, out of a fast. When people fast and they feel terrible and it didn't help them, well, good Lord, that's an exercise in you know, futility. Like, good, stop that. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, so again, that keto continuum is something we're continuing to work on. If you want to be the first to see me try to explain it and uh, unpack it, uh, that um, uh, toxic traditions is how you sign up please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.